not missing the opportunity for some amateur dramatics. These protesters, who feel their voices haven't been listened to in the ULEZ expansion debate, staged a funeral for democracy at the gates of Downing Street today. London has been ignored, consultation has been ignored, the meaning of consultation has been destroyed. Today, London's ultra-low emission zone, known as ULEZ, expanded to all of the capital's boroughs, meaning anyone driving a non-compliant vehicle will now be forced to pay £12.50 a day. To some, it's a victory for cleaner air, but to others, it's a cruel tax on those who can't afford to replace their car. My wife, she's got a perfectly good car, which she's self-employed. She's not eligible for the scrapping scheme. Anything she does go for will be at three or four times the price. We can't afford that on top of the cost of living, everything else. We've got kids, we can't afford this, we can't afford to live by this. Is this something you usually do, come to a protest? I've never, ever done it in my life. Never. You feel that strongly? Yes. I, in, in next month, I will be 78. As I say, my, my husband in March will be 80. We need transport where we live. And, you know, our friends are out that live at the coast. They said they won't be coming to visit us to, to pay for £12.50 12, for a day's visit. They're not going to do it. It's, what he's doing is putting us in lockdown. You know, because that's what he's doing, he's shutting us away in our homes. Transport for London says harmful nitrogen oxide levels have fallen by 46% in central London and 21% in inner London since the ULES was introduced in 2019. Critics argue this latest expansion will only see a minimal change. The fierce opposition has led to some trying to sabotage it. It's only day one of the scheme and you can see that these ULES cameras are already out of action. Somebody spray painted the lenses red. They've done it on all four cameras at this junction and anti-ULES activists are promising more disruption to the scheme. Police say hundreds of license plate reading cameras have already been damaged, disconnected or stolen. But amidst the anger, there's relief from those who've been sounding the alarm on pollution for years. This is a really great day for the health of Londoners today, with the ULEZ being expanded. I'm a lung specialist, and what my patients tell me is that they really struggle to breathe on high pollution days. It's terrifying not being able to catch your breath, and the pollution levels that we have in the city are making that worse. I also see patients being admitted to my hospital with strokes, with heart attacks, with liver disease, with cancer. There's clear data, international data, that all of these problems are made worse by and caused by air pollution. Steve Tuckwell, the Conservative Party candidate, 13,965. Yeah! After unexpectedly retaining Boris Johnson's old seat on a campaign fuelled by anti ulez sentiment, opposition to low pollution areas is now viewed as a possible route to winning seats in the next election. I disagree with what the, the mayor is doing. I think people and families are struggling with the cost of living. That's obvious to everyone. And at that time, the Labour Party, the Labour mayor, Sadiq Khan and Keir Starmer are introducing the ULEZ charge, which is going to hit working families. I don't think that's the right priority. I don't think that's the right thing uh, to do. And I wish they had uh, not done it. The Prime Minister omitting the fact that it was his old boss, Boris Johnson, who first announced plans for a ULEZ almost a decade ago. With the far-reaching expansion now in action in London, the impact is being closely followed by politicians across the country as they wrangle with just how much the public is willing to pay for much-needed environmental measures before the next election. Anya Pop, well, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, joins me now from City Hall. Thanks for joining us. If you look at the data from your impact assessment, it says the expansion will cause only a minor reduction of 1.3% in average exposure to NO2 across the capital and negligible reductions of 0.1% in exposure to particulates. This is just not worth it. So you're referring to percentages uh, in a big geographical area, but in absolute terms, 
what the Euro's expansion will lead to is a 10% reduction in nitrogen dioxide from cars, a 16% reduction in particulate matter from uh, cars. And in terms of absolute terms, we saw in central London a reduction of 230 tonnes of nitrogen dioxide, but the expansion will lead per year to a reduction of 363 tonnes per year of nitrogen dioxide. In terms of carbon emissions, we saw per annum a reduction of around 13,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide when the Central London scheme began. The expansion will lead yeah, I mean, to 27,000 uh, tonnes of carbon dioxide. Well, that, that's I a mean, lot. How, well, you, you how much does London say, emit? It's about 30 million tonnes, isn't it? Well, even a small improvement in air quality makes a big difference to the children who are admitted to hospital. I'll give you one example of uh, the difference it's made. Uh, when the ULES scheme was introduced in central London, uh, we saw a reduction by more than a third of children being admitted to hospital with air pollution uh, illnesses. You speak to lung specialists and specialists in respiratory issues, and you've done so in your programme uh, previously, they will tell you uh, that imp improvements in air quality leads to a big improvement in the health of uh, London. And look, the reason why I'm doing this is because in outer London, we know are the 10 boroughs with the largest number of premature deaths in our yeah. city. In outer London, 24 of the 30 GP practices with the largest number of respiratory patients exist uh, there. But also in outer London, more than two thirds of those Londoners with asthma and other issues uh, live. I think those but, in central London and inner London who benefit from clean air, so should those in outer London. But asthma is caused by all sorts of things, not just vehicle emissions. It's caused by, uh, you know, other pollution too. It's a bit misleading to suggest that, well, let me deal with that. you know, let me all deal of with these that. deaths let are down to that. the cars. Well, let me deal with that. So, so the same experts, the same experts the government used, this government used, to commission a report in relation to air pollution, uh, which showed, according to the government's own report, uh, there were up to 36,000 deaths across the country linked with air pollution. This report for the government showed that uh, between 2017 and 2026, £1.6 billion will be spent by the NHS. Those very same experts are the experts who say in London there's around 4,000 premature deaths a year. And also it's the experts who say uh, that actually the Euros in central London has been shown to be effective, the expansion to inland has been shown to be uh, effective, and the predictions are in outer London we can see improvements not seen so far. Isn't the trouble that this is actually just down to bad politics? You know, the, the, the existing ULES has worked to varying degrees, depending on which side of the politics you are. The expansion, as we've just said, in percentage terms, offers very little benefit. And, and it's not worth the political heat you're taking as a result. That's why Keir Starmer is no longer supporting the expansion of these zones. And it, it just comes down to the moment we're in, the cost of living crisis we're in, and that's why you know, the Labour leadership are running a mile from this. Look, I think, uh, you know, tackling air pollution and tackling the climate emergency should be above party politics. But I've seen the evidence in relation to the consequences of air pollution and the effectiveness of the ultra-low emissions. And I simply can't stand idly by when I know there are these consequences because of air pollution and there is a solution to the challenges in outer London. And by the way, at the same time, as cleaning up the air in outer London and five million, more, five million more Londoners benefiting from clean air, we're massively improving public transport in outer London too. Do you think Keir Starmer's being a bit spineless? Well, no, I think, you know, Keir Starmer's made a very valid point, which is we can't have a one-size-fits-all approach for our country. What's right for London isn't right for Luton. What's right for Bermondsey isn't right for uh, Burnley. But I'm quite clear in relation to uh, the bereaved mum I speak to regularly, the inpatients are visited in hospitals regularly, the clinicians treating the children in Great Ormond Street and the children's Evelina Hospital. But the reports I've read from the World Health Organization, from King's College, from Imperial College, from Queen's Mary University, but also the report from the government's own chief medical officer. How can I stand idly by? Well, I know there's these problems, but also there's a solution. Sadiq Khan, thank you very much.